the story set off a full day of speculation in Washington for members of Congress and the media that impeachment and indictment might be imminent. Now, to repeat, the special counsel is denying the substance of that story. Good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. This is moving very fast, a remarkable day. Trace Gallagher has more on what is happening. Trace? And this really is the bombshell, Tucker, because breaking right now, as you said, Robert Mueller, special counsel, a spokesperson, has knocked down this BuzzFeed report, quoting now BuzzFeed's description of specific statements to the special counsel's office and characterization of documents and testimony obtained by this office regarding Michael Cohen's congressional testimony are not accurate. That is critical because, remember, the BuzzFeed report laid this at the door of the special counsel, saying, quoting again, the special counsel's office learned about Trump's directive for Cohen to lie to Congress through interviews with multiple witnesses from the Trump organization and internal company emails, text messages, and a cache of other documents. But one of the reporters who wrote the piece admitted he never saw the alleged damning documents, but he still maintained that his reporting was rock solid. Listen to him. I am rock solid. My sourcing on this goes beyond the two that are on the record. This 100 percent happened. Yeah, 100 percent, except President Trump says it 100 percent didn't happen, tweeting, quote, lying to reduce jail time, clearly referencing Michael Cohen's three year prison sentence. White House Deputy Press Secretary Hogan Gidley added this comment. Watch. This is absolutely, absolutely ludicrous that we are giving any type of credence or credibility to a news outlet like BuzzFeed. And he's right. BuzzFeed does have credibility issues, including multiple accusations of plagiarizing and stealing original content. A Pew Research survey also found the publication to be unreliable. And of course, BuzzFeed published the uncorroborated and salacious steel dossier, which was labeled an unverified smear of President Trump. Even Democrats eager to impeach the president had to qualify their comments today, saying if the information is true. Watch. We don't know whether the new report about uh, Cohen being told to lie by the president is true or not. We'll have to ask Mr. Cohen that. Yeah, Cohen is supposed to go back before Congress next month, but his legal advisor, Lanny Davis, says he might be having second thoughts about that. Remember, 24 hours after BuzzFeed broke this story, nobody matched the reporting. And now we know it's because it wasn't true. Tucker. Just unbelievable. Just unbelievable. If you've been by a television today, you have seen a level of frothy hysteria that really I, I've never seen in 25 years of watching. Trace Gallagher, thank you very much. Andy McCarthy is a contributing editor at National Review. Uh, he's the former chief assistant U.S. attorney in New York, and he joins us tonight. Um, Andy McCarthy, this is not, I mean, I think most of us were at least taking seriously the possibility that this story was rooted in fact now the special counsel's office which has commented on virtually nothing for the past two years is knocking it down what is your reaction to this well i think the most important thing tucker is the money paragraph of the of the buzzfeed story is the one that trace gallagher homed in on and the reason that's important is because what what the Trump response to this, if there were any credibility to it, would want to be is that you can't believe anything that Cohen says because he's a pervasive serial liar. But the way this story was teed up, it was that Mueller had developed independent information right. uh, and corroborated it, pieced it together himself, and then he confronted Cohen on it. Not it's it's not a thing where you know Cohen is peddling this information. So that, if I were the White House, that would have been the part that would have alarmed me the most, and that's the part that it appears that, that Mueller has blown up. I, I think the big hesitation that those of us who watched this sort of thing and did this sort of work, prosecutor work for, for a living, also couldn't get our brains wrapped around, is that what a prosecutor would normally do if he thought that there was a conspiracy between Trump and Cohen to lie to Congress is 
you would have Cohen plead guilty to conspiracy to obstruct a congressional investigation and then have him in court when the judge asks, what did you do that makes you guilty? Say, I was involved in this conspiracy with the president. He told me to lie to Congress and I went on ahead and did it. Exactly. Uh, you didn't see anything like that in the charges against Cohen. So where could this story have come from? Do you think? I mean, by my reading of it, and it was parts of it were unclear by design, but it left the impression that this was an allegation directly from the office of the special counsel. Yeah. What do you make? Yeah, I mean, where do you think this information came from? Yeah, the, the word that stuck, struck out, stuck out to me, Tucker, when I read this was the word and, oddly, uh, oddly enough. They say at the beginning of the story that the two sources are connected to an investigation of Cohen, which made it elusive whether they were talking about the investigation of Cohen, meaning the special counsel's investigation. So you don't know coming away from this, are these a couple of guys who, you know, are in the loop enough to get briefed on law enforcement investigations, but are not in the core of Mueller's team. It's very hard to, to make a judgment about that. But I can only tell you from, you know, I, I was fortunate enough as a prosecutor to work on a couple of cases that were pretty high profile cases. And if you asked um, the number of people who now would say to you that they worked on those cases and were the case agent on the case, um, there's probably more people who would say it than were, you know, than saw Bobby Thompson's home run. Um, you know, so there's an awful lot of people <laughs> it's who a, no, it's a say they point. have lots of information. Yeah. Right. It's like there were 15 million people who claimed to have been at Woodstock. Um, why right. would why would the special counsel's office weigh in on this tonight in the way that it did? I'm really pleased that they did. I, I think that um, it probably this is the sort of thing that could really compromise the president's ability to govern. I think a lot of us who have been troubled by this investigation from the beginning think that there's been too much um, deference to investigative secrecy and not enough acknowledgement that when you have a special counsel investigation it really makes it very difficult for the president to govern the country which is a much right. more important thing than investigative secrecy I think here perhaps Mueller saw that this was really harming the president and it was just flat wrong so he he felt compelled to say something what do you think of the reaction by members of Congress today to this story well you know it's such it's so political now it's it, you know each each side but the the Democrats in particular who've just been you know deranged about Trump from the start anything that seems like it's blood in the water they just go berserk over so I, I can't be surprised by anything anymore amazing it's an amazing moment um, still trying to shift gears here uh, Andy McCarthy thank yeah. you very much for your insight into that. Thanks, Tucker. Dan Bongino is a former Secret Service agent. He's the author of Spygate, the attempted sabotage of Donald J. Trump, and he joins us today. Um, Dan, I guess this shouldn't be as surprising as we are saying it is. One yeah. of the reporters whose byline is on this story, Anthony Cormier, seems like a real reporter to me. Um, well, he is a real reporter. and seems like a decent one. The other guy whose name on the, is on the story, Jason Leopold, is a political activist with a long history of making reckless and unfounded charges. He's the guy who reported in 2006, I believe, that Karl Rove had been indicted, um, and that right. turned out to be uh, false. He's, he's not a journalist. <clears throat> Again, he's a political activist. So what does this tell us about the credibility of BuzzFeed or any publication Rowe, that would employ a guy like this to um, cover a story this be, central. Uh, false. He's not a journalist. Yeah, Tucker, uh, there's he also some other allegations black. out there about so Leopold, uh, about, about plagiarism. The uh, this this is a real black eye for the media today. Like this, now, as you know, Tucker, BuzzFeed has been involved uh, in a significant yeah, fake Tucker, news uh, campaign before as well, where they were the first run, ones Leopold, to run with the dossier, uh, which really uh, was the initiation and the flashpoint for, the for this whole today. investigation. Now, you know, um, Tucker, Tucker, this isn't really a good day. Uh, um, a you know, listen, I'm a supporter of the president. Well, uh, I, 
I don't first think that's a big secret. With the but we do need a free uh, and really fair press or some semblance of it, Tucker. Yeah. Um, and even though I do my best um, to call out Tucker, instances really of malicious um, uh, uh, malfeasance and misfeasance in reporting, this story today is a significant black eye for the media outlets all over the country. And you know what? It shows that Donald Trump is correct when he when he says that a lot of times these people are at a minimum the, the enemies of truth. Um, I think that's a pretty accurate statement at this point. This story was devastating. I mean, you saw it. People were frothing at the mouth all day. over the yes. There were calls for impeachment. There was a guy on another network making Nixon-like allegations over his Twitter account to hundreds of thousands of people. This does the country absolutely no. This was really a disgrace. It, but it was revealing. I mean, the, the story was tough. I and mean, let me just be completely honest about it. If that story had been accurate, I think it would have been very hard for the administration to survive it. I mean, the story, again, alleged that the president had directed his personal attorney to lie to the Congress of the United States under oath to commit perjury. So that's not yeah. a, that's a crime. That's a felony. Um, so it was a very, very serious story. But the reaction from the press, but it turned out to be a false story. And it was always a story that was not yeah. corroborated. There were no names in it. So the reaction from the press all day long was, you know, finally, I mean, it was like Christmas. We got him. We've been working for two years to get him, and we finally got him. And I wonder if that's the role of the press. That seems like the role of political consultants to me, to get a politician. Well, well, Tucker, I'm not uh, in any way trying to be self-laudatory or pat myself on the back, but there were red flags as a former federal agent all over this story earlier in the day. Uh, let me point out, too. Uh, why would Donald Trump lie and initiate a crime, which you are correct, instructing Michael Cohen to lie if that happened, which now it looks like it obviously didn't, is a crime? Why would he instruct him to lie about a non-crime? A building project in Moscow, Tucker, is not illegal. There's nothing right. illegal about it. That part of the story made no sense. But secondly, think about this, Tucker. You were in journalism before. You know, you have the scoop of the century right here, right? And you give it to BuzzFeed and to a reporter at BuzzFeed with a checkered past? What does this say to you? Think this through in the audience. This was probably some kind of a canary trap. It was probably someone feeding false information to sniff out some leakers on the inside of the government at the only people eager enough to pick up this ridiculous story was this discredited guy at BuzzFeed with a history of malicious actions in the journalism field. That's what it says to me. I could be wrong. It could just be a bad source. But this says to me that this was probably a canary trap and this guy got suckered into the whole thing. There were red flags all over this story if you were paying attention. One of the reasons this country is so volatile right now is because nobody trusts people in authority. So many of our institutions have been discredited. And part of the reason they're discredited is because nobody's ever held, held accountable for misdeeds, for screwing up intentionally or not. So here you have a publication that has the support to the tune of tens, hundreds of millions of dollars from business. BuzzFeed has a huge market cap, okay? And they're the ones who printed the dossier without verifying any of it. It turned out to be false. It turned out to be a political document. And then they run this story and you sort of wonder at a certain point, BuzzFeed's only been around for a few years and they've run two of the biggest, what appear to be hoaxes of this moment. Is there any accountability at all? Um, I, I, I don't think so. The only accountability is that the public, uh, the journal, Tucker, journalists have one job, just one to get the facts right. When you don't get the facts right and the public overwhelmingly, upwards of 80 to 90 percent of conservatives don't trust you, you know, that kind of says like, you suck, pardon my language, but you're not, yeah. it's like if your job is to sell cars and you don't sell a car, you're fired. The media's one job is to get the facts right. When 90% of people in a political party say you're not telling them the truth, that, that's the ultimate barometer of your, your, your hashtag epic failure. The Tucker, this isn't even it. They failed on the Mike Flynn story, the Deutsche Bank story, the WikiLeaks right. Don Jr. story, McClatchy on the, on the, the Prague dossier, uh, Cohen story. The drapes Nikki Haley story in the New York Times, it is just endless, and the public trust in the media is gone. This is not a good day for the country. I believe well, me, that, I'm not smiling that's, about that's this. That's what it is. And it's, you know, the root of it is, is understandable, recognizable to anybody who's ever supervised reporters. I've supervised a lot of reporters, and I always told them, I've got, you know, pretty strong political views, but I always say to the reporters, if you're too angry, if you hate the person you write about, or if you love the person you write about, 
You shouldn't be writing about that person because you can't see things clearly and you're very likely to make mistakes because you're blinded by your own emotions. So if you're the editor assigning this piece at BuzzFeed and you're assigning it to a guy who's a political activist transparently and who has a history of getting things wrong and making things up and plagiarizing, that's crazy behavior. That's reckless behavior. Why would you do that? And, and, and Tucker, even worse is these stories that are mistakes and are not properly edited or not properly supervised or not properly fact checked are so transparently obvious that there was a missing step. You had one of the reporters admit he hasn't seen the evidence. What guy? I mean, is this this is journalism in, 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 yeah. in this era? And the stories, Tucker, are never, ever mistakes with the dreaded air quotes are never mistakes that are pro Trump. That's got to say to you that something is wrong. And believe me, I don't want pro-Trump mistakes. I want fair coverage. I'm simply suggesting that when a litany of stories over the Trump two years in office right now, which are bombshells, are continuously debunked in, in, in just an uh, incredible fashion, embarrassing the media, and are anti-Trump, you got to believe there's something wrong in America's newsrooms, but they just have no ability to self-reflect because totally they can't true. see themselves. It's like the Truman Show, Tucker. They're Jim the Carrey in the Truman Show right the now. The standards have got, and I feel so, this Cormier guy, who was a newspaper reporter, won a Pulitzer Prize, seems like kind of a straight arrow guy. He gets a double byline with this kind of nutty Leopold character who everyone knows is not a reliable narrator. To put it mildly, I can't imagine why he accepted writing a story with this, with this other guy. A very uh, turned out well, to be a big yeah. mistake, I guess. Uh, Dan, thank you very much. Good to see you. Thanks a lot, Tucker. Good seeing you. Well, tonight's news completely upends what we thought we were going to talk about tonight, and what virtually everyone in Washington has believed for the last 24 hours. It's especially surprising because the Mueller team has been so very hesitant to comment on anything in public, anything about the investigation or reporting about the investigation. Fox Chief National Correspondent Ed Henry has been following all of this closely for more than a year now, and he's yep. got some perspective for us. Yeah, Tucker, Ed? I mean, you're absolutely right, because Robert Mueller has been accused by conservatives of leaking and, and being out to get to the president. You've heard the witch hunt claim, and his allies, uh, some of them Democrats, uh, have said uh, for a long time, he doesn't comment, he doesn't weigh in, he's trying to be fair. And so for him to insert himself is extremely rare and tells you this story is 100% hundred percent not true. Why is that a big deal? Well, because we had commentator after commentator come out today on other networks, and there should be accountability, as you suggested at the top. And as a reporter, I'm getting kind of angry about this, because as yeah. journalist, you said you've instructed a lot of reporters over the years, and you have. And you know, another thing we instruct reporters and colleagues, and we talk about in newsrooms, is you never say, if true, this is a big deal. And yet, right. how many times did you hear that today, Tucker? You heard it over and over yeah. again. If true, this is a big deal. If true, it could lead to impeachment. Well, if true that Ed Henry robbed a bank, he's in serious exactly. trouble. I didn't rob a bank. You don't have any evidence of it. And I think the most important part of the Robert Mueller statement is not the first line, uh, but the second line where he talks about the idea that there's evidence collected by the special counsel's office is not true. That's significant because what every critic of the president was hanging this story on today was that it's not Michael Cohn, an admitted liar, his word right. against the president. It's emails, text messages, and other things in the Trump world. Uh, and now Robert Mueller is saying, I don't have those text messages, those documents. Again, we have to be careful. We have to see. Uh, we can't overcorrect the story as well. Uh, Bob Mueller's investigation is still ongoing. We'll exactly. see what he has. I agree. Let's not say the president's in the clear tonight, but let's not impeach him as a whole bunch of people did over the last 24 hours. My final point on this is, is Axios, which is, again, supposed to be a very credible organization. They have a lot of credible people there. Uh, I was just reading as I was listening to you and Dan Bongino, they had this all outtake a few hours ago about how what's really, really bad for the president is that Donald Trump Jr. has exposure. Because when you look at the story, uh, and I'm looking down because I won't even read you the whole quote, but the BuzzFeed story said that Don Jr. and Ivanka and other family members had exposure. Well, if the core part of the story about there being evidence that the president directed Michael Cohn to lie is bogus, the stuff about Don Jr. and Ivanka must be bogus as well. So why do we have so many people in the media who seem to be part of some sort of a lynch mob? Let's indict Donald Trump Jr. Let's say, you know, let's bring all these people down. How about we just wait for the facts? How about we take a deep breath? 
uh, and follow the facts on the story, which is what we're supposed to do as journalists. First thing I did this morning, first thing when I woke up was called around. I woke up early, too. Mm -hmm. And I, I called a bunch of people I know or sort of plugged in. I said, this story looks really bad. And if it was yeah. written about me, yeah. I'd be very concerned. And I got back word. You know, they don't seem concerned, actually. I didn't talk to anyone at the White House, but, but I talked to people who did. And they said, they don't seem worried at all. And I thought that either they're lying <laughs> or... They really, they know something that I don't know or that it's not reflected in the story. So what's the effect, since you've been in journalism yeah. so long, both of us worked at another network sure. 20 years ago, yeah. you've seen our business change. When Trump exits the stage at some point and all of this is over, what's left of our business, mm. journalism? It, it, the honest answer is, is, is I simply don't know. I mean, I think, to be fair, we should push back when the president shouts fake news and says the uh, fake news is the enemy of the American people. And I know some people are no, not going to no, like me saying that, but as a journalist, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to give you a blunt, direct answer. Uh, I don't think that that's helpful. On the other hand, the critics of the president should wake up because the fact of the matter is when you keep producing fake news, and it's not just BuzzFeed in the story, my no, broader point is all as CNN and everyone else who, when you wake up this morning, the president's about to be impeached, if true, of course, they had that little caveat. Um, that's just as bad as the original story because you've, you're supposed to have credibility. Uh, and, and I just simply think um, that, that people hanging it on this if true business, the more fake news you create, the more fodder you're giving that man there, the commander in chief, to say, you know what, you are fake news. And like I said, I'm trying to be fair, honest, fair and balanced, as we say here, uh, and, and say that when the president says that, sometimes that's not fair. Sometimes it is, folks, because there are a whole bunch of people who are creating fake news. And the more you do it, the more the president's going to say it. And you know what? The less credibility, as you said, many in the mainstream media are going to have. So you often hear people in Washington say, and, and no one has more contempt for the public than people who live in our city, as you well know, <laughs> yeah. but you often hear them say, you know, the morons out there yeah. in the sort of great middle of the country, they believe all these conspiracy theories and they're going to all these flaky websites for their news. And I often think to myself, why do you think they're doing that? You know, why do you think they're tuning into alternative news channels? Because you're running stories like this. It's right. so like, why would they believe you? Right. And, you know, I was having lunch with a Democrat that you know today, and I was pressing on this point. I said, well, what if this BuzzFeed story uh, is not true? And the person said something like, well, but Russia, you know, Russia, though, they, they impacted the election. And I said, why is it always this fallback? It becomes if you're not winning the argument, you're not sure if the story is true. It's just this fallback on Russia, Russia, Russia. And we've talked about it many, many times. And it seems to be a convenient excuse for Democrats about why they lost the last election. Folks, it's more than two years ago. We're now in the middle of government shutdown. The president is talking about a crisis at the border. I was filling in for Martha tonight, and we led not with this story because it broke about halfway through the show, but we led with the fact that an American record, Tucker, as you know, has now been set. The most number of Central Americans or, or anyone from any background to break into America successfully, more than 300 yeah. Central American migrants. And yet we have a large number of people in the media and a large number of people in the Democratic Party saying it's a manufactured crisis. That's fake. It's not manufactured. It is a crisis. I'm not defending no, the president. But you know what? He's right that there's a problem at the border. Look at the photos. Don't listen to me. Don't listen to the president. Look at, right. at what's actually happening. And yet every time you talk about it, it's like, well, Russia, Russia, something happened. They, they, they threw the election. And now the, and yet another story about that is not true. And so credibility is suffering. Really quick, Ed, has BuzzFeed responded to the statement well, from the special counsel's I'm, office, I'm looking, where do they go from While here? I was on the air, they put out, to be fair to them, uh, they put out a tweet that said the special counsel is now denying our report from last night. So, And then they posted what that statement is. So in fairness to them, they are, at least to me, in the early stages, look like they're being transparent about the fact that there's a dispute. But I'm not going to give them that much credit. Yes, they're being transparent now. They should have been more transparent last night about the sourcing. Yeah. And also, to get back to our conversation about newsrooms, how do you publish the story? Uh, I mean, I know that the story, I'm, I'm refreshing my memory from last night about 10 p.m. Eastern. It said something about the special counsel not denying it. Maybe the special counsel didn't know they were really going with the story. I don't know all of the particulars. But you've got to get the facts before you publish it. It's fine to be transparent now, but they could not go with the story until they had it nailed down. And by the way, on CNN this morning, one of the two reporters was saying this is a 100 percent true. Look at CNN New Days. 
uh, a Twitter account. They still have yeah. a tweet up there with a long segment quoting the reporter from BuzzFeed saying this story is 100 percent true. And by extension, they were suggesting this is really bad for Donald Trump. Well, you know what? I, I was stuck. Yeah, I, I, I listened to it stuck involuntarily stuck in an airport this morning. Why do they still play that crap in airports? <laughs> I th don't they pay to do that? Or yeah, they, they pay. I've, I've seen it's, that on uh, Tucker Carlson. It's unbelievable. Time. Ed Henry, thank you for Good that perspective. You, Appreciate it. Well, there turned out to be, and this is the understatement of the evening, a huge issue with BuzzFeed's sourcing of this report. Though, by the way, I'm just getting word that as of this hour, BuzzFeed is saying we stand by our reporting, even though the apparent source of the reporting, the person who would know, is now denying it. Guy Benson's been watching all this. He's political editor at townhall.com and, of course, co-host of Benson and Harf. He joins us tonight. Guy, what do you make of this? Well, Tucker, I mean, yes, this is a huge issue, I think, for BuzzFeed here tonight. I'm a little bit taken aback at this development that you just reported, that they are standing by their reporting, because if that's what they're doing, they are contradicting Robert Mueller and the special counsel's team. Are they calling them liars? Because they put out a statement very clearly. They know the cards that they hold, right? They're the special counsel's office. Right. They know what they do and do not know. For them to say the way this story was reported is not accurate, should be case closed, I would imagine. Uh, I guess BuzzFeed probably in a bit of chaos here tonight. One more piece of this, Ronan Farrow, who is an investigative reporter at The New Yorker, he tweeted moments ago something very interesting. He said, I can't speak to BuzzFeed's sourcing, but for what it's worth, I decline to run with parts of the narrative they, meaning BuzzFeed, conveyed based on a source central to the story repeatedly disputing the idea that Trump directly issued orders of that kind, of that kind meaning to lie under oath to Michael Cohen. So there's Ronan Farrow who's saying, I got wind of this and some of my best sources were telling me, no, Trump did not do this. BuzzFeed went with it. And here's my question, Tucker, because I was listening to your conversation a moment ago with Ed Henry very carefully. You were talking about accountability and accuracy and all of that. I would like to know at this point, who were these two sources that are quoted by BuzzFeed? Yeah. If they have been given false information and now they've got egg and mud and everything else all over their face, it would seem, I think it's now time journalistically to burn the sources. Tell us who these unidentified law exactly. enforcement sources were who gave you the information that was so apparently inaccurate that Robert Mueller and his team took the stunning step of coming out on a Friday night and putting out a denial of the story. If you're going to stand by the sources, I, I'm a bit mystified by that. I think we now, as the American people, have a right to know who are these people, what well, did they tell course. you, and why. So this is an ongoing theme, and you see it very frequently in the media, which demands, as I think we should, transparency from people in power. Show us your tax returns. You know, who did you speak to? Where were you on the night of July 29th? Whatever. Sure. But then when caught making mistakes deliberately or accidentally, refused to account for them. So NBC leaks its own Access Hollywood tape, destroying the life of its own reporter, Billy Bush, to The Washington Post, and then won't comment on what it did. In the case of BuzzFeed, doesn't that publication have a moral obligation, Ben Smith, its editor, have a moral obligation to tell us, where did you get this? Okay, you misled us, you lied, you made a mistake. How did this happen? Right, so that's the point. If you want to believe that the problem here is the sources, and if the sources aren't good, that obviously reflects on the outlet that ran with those sources without attribution. But if the core argument that BuzzFeed is going to make is, we were told false things and ran with it, it looks bad for us, you would think they would want to hang those sources out to drop. Exactly. Right? exactly. If they were right. that wrong, they should come out and tell us, all right, they have given up their an uh, their anonymity. The quid pro quo here of, of not listing their names and attributing their names to those words, it's gone because of what's happened here in the Mueller statement that they put out. But as of now, it would seem that they are quasi doubling down here and they said, stay tuned. Believe me, we will. I just wish they'd stop calling themselves journalists. You know, run your little cat pictorials, your stupid little listicles, or whatever you're thinking up in Brooklyn, but stop calling yourselves journalists and stop playing in a world that you don't understand, which is what they're doing. Well, that, you know, there's... It's infuriating. It's, yeah, right. It is infuriating, because it makes... It really does devalue the currency uh, that the rest of us trade in, I would say.
Great to see you. The press spent Thanks, almost Dr. the entire day, as you watched, reporting on BuzzFeed's false report and its implications. Impeachment, indictment, maybe a wave of indictments. Maybe everybody goes to jail. Well, it looks like not, at least for now. Ethan Behrman is a progressive radio host in California and a frequent guest on the show. He joins us tonight. So, I mean, Ethan, could this be, or let me rephrase the question and make it a statement, this is an example of people believing what they wanted to believe. Well, I think that there was some of that. However, I want to say something right up front. It, it's an interesting and odd day when I agree as much with Dan Bongino uh, as and maybe even more so than Guy Benson right now, um, it, because he, Dan is right. We have to have some trust and faith in journalists. And there's yes. a problem right now where journalists want to be opinion hosts and they blur the line because it's exciting to share your opinion. You and I love sharing our opinions. That's yeah, what no, we do, right? True. And we want to base it upon facts. And it's really important that we have some faith. However, I think it's really important to parse the words of the attorney here, the special counsel. He didn't say false. Not accurate, actually, in a legal context, is very different from false. So we don't know, and in slight deference to BuzzFeed at this point, because I am deeply disappointed in this news coming out, but some slight deference to BuzzFeed, which is, hey, let's figure out what isn't accurate before we throw all of it out. Maybe there were pieces that were right, right. what pieces weren't. And, and I think it's important to understand what is wrong about it. Look, I, I will say, and I, you make a fair point. There's a lot we don't know, and I am not going to get over my skis in speculating about what did or did not happen. I don't think Russia's the primary threat we face going forward. That's obvious. But the specifics of this case are unknown, at least to me. So you're right. We're going to find out a lot of stuff we don't know. But to have someone who would know, the special counsel, take this extraordinary step of refuting, at least to some degree, this story tells you, it must have been pretty wrong. Why else would he do this? Because he's covering for Trump? Probably not, right? Yeah, I mean, it, it, this is absolutely astounding. As I was coming in and seeing this news come across, I, I, my jaw might have been uh, dropping open because Mueller doesn't talk. His team doesn't talk. Exactly. For them no, to come right. out and talk right now. Yeah, this is a huge deal. At least but on I also the record. Want to point out, we have a new... I'm sorry, we're, yeah, I'm being told we're out of time. We blew a break. We're going to a hard okay. break. Ethan Behrman, it's always great to see you. Thank you for that. Thanks. We'll be right back after this. It's our passion. Welcome back. Excellent kind of an amazing night. Fear. Washington for the we're last 24 hours discussing Cancer impeachment, indictment, multiple indictments, all now. of the speculation flowing from a story that broke last night on BuzzFeed, a website famous for its cat videos, wading into the political realm with the piece claiming that Donald Trump ordered his personal lawyer, Michael Cohen, to lie under oath to Congress. That, of course, would be a felony. That would be obstruction of justice. That would be grounds for, in fact, impeachment. Tonight, right before we went on the air, in a move that has v really no precedent at all, Robert Mueller's office, which never comments on anything, issued a statement unbidden saying, in effect, the BuzzFeed story is wrong. Now we have a response from BuzzFeed. This is from the editor, Ben Smith, who's been a guest on this show, the person who put the now famous discredited dossier into circulation. He says this, in response to the statement tonight from the special counsel spokesman, we stand by our reporting and the sources who informed it, and we urge the special counsel to make clear what he's disputing. In other words, Ben Smith is saying, let Robert Mueller correct our story. Does perhaps the onus lie with Ben Smith and BuzzFeed to make certain that what they reported last night is accurate? It sounds like it is not accurate. We'll find out whether their sources uh, were telling the truth in the coming days. In the meantime, Terry Churchy was Deputy Assistant Director of the Counterterrorism Division of the FBI, and he joins us tonight. Terry, we originally asked you to come on tonight to talk uh, about border security, but before we do, I want to ask you your response to this back and forth between BuzzFeed and the Special Counsel's Office. What's your take? Sure, Tucker. Well, I'm, uh, I'm a skeptic because of being in law enforcement, but I think it's kind of pretty simple. When you take uh, the election and you take the House and you uh, now convert all the committees that you have to investigating various aspects of the President of the United States, 
then uh, your lifeblood has to be to react to stories. So you're going to see more stories planted so that all these committees can have uh, right. uh, a lot of work to do. And I, I think this is just more of the same. And I think we can expect more of this because, um, quite honestly, uh, the electorate in some places is putting more and more progressives and self-described socialist in positions. And uh, ironically, uh, years ago when I first got into the FBI, one of the missions of the FBI in its counterintelligence efforts was to try and keep these people out of government. Why? Because we would end up with massive dysfunction and massive disinformation and massive misinformation. And it seems to me that's where we're at today. Uh, I'm glad I don't live in D.C. I don't know yeah. how you start to separate this and make, make head or tails from it, but it's a mess. I mean, look, if you believe in socialism, if you've got some program you want to impose in the country, tell us what it is. Explain us how you, how you think it works. Make the case for it. But these people are so stupid and so emotional, so overwrought, that they think that the key to running the country is an endless series of gotcha stories, criminalizing political disagreement. I mean, it's, it's, it's the least straightforward way to run a government, I would, I would say. So let me just ask you uh, about the original topic that we want to talk to you about tonight, and that's border security. So you heard the new Speaker of the House say the other day that she, in, in place of a physical wall, would like some sort of high-tech, non-physical, sort of quasi-magical wall, a digital wall, on the border, um, and that that would be more effective somehow than an actual wall. Do you think that's true? And why do you think she's saying that? Well, first of all, I don't think that's true, but I think it's pretty easy why she's saying that. And in fact, I'll say this. If Donald Trump called Nancy Pelosi tonight and said, look, why don't you give me five billion dollars for a, a technological wall along our border? She'd say, now, you know, we could probably start talking about that. And the, and the reason is simple. Uh, the Democratic Party is simply owned by the uh, technocrats in Silicon Valley. I worked in Palo Alto. I worked counterintelligence and, uh, and uh, terrorism there and had all kinds of contacts many years ago with Silicon Valley. And you could see this developing then. The Silicon Valley depends upon cheap labor. They, they love the B-1 visa program. Uh, the Lawrence Livermore National Lab, this is a national entity. They like the B-1 visa program, and they were making no bones about it in meetings we had. They would, they would say, look, we can get people cheaper than having to, to bring in young American kids who we just don't think are as good of scientists. Well, that's baloney, I think. But uh, they own uh, the Democrats, and the Democrats, in turn, have to do things for them. I mean, take a look at just every symptom and every indicator, whether it's Elon Musk and the fact that he's a billionaire because of all of his government contracts and right. all of his ideas the government funds, or Solyndra, or the fact that President Obama and Hillary Clinton and Dianne Feinstein and all of these people, they have a solid march out to Silicon Valley's dinners and thousand of plate lunches and all of these other things. They have to deliver in return. The Silicon Valley for the Democrats is the new union. People scratch their head and wonder, why don't, why, what have the Democrats done? Why did they abandon some of the Midwestern states and the people they used to represent? Well, because they have no money anymore. The Silicon Valley has the money, and quite honestly now, they're pumping this ideology into some of the people that they're helping get elected. It's very, very dangerous because the Silicon Valley, totally other topic, is completely wrapped around the axle of intelligence services, from the Chinese to the Russians, uh, even to our friends, uh, some of the friendly nations. Uh, the French said it best one time, uh, a number of years ago, they said, look, sure we're friends of the United States, but we have our own interest, and we will rely on dealing with our interest and make sure that we take care of those before our friendship. And that's, uh, that's pretty much how all of these places look at it. I think you're, it I, to your I've never heard anybody say what you just said, Pushing a digital solution to everything is, in effect, a payoff to their campaign contributors. But now that you say it out loud, it's so clearly true that I hope you will remember, keep Tuster, saying it. I, I want to and remember something. Uh, when you put all this technology in, the government loves to buy it. One or two years later, it all needs to be replaced with the, the latest, best upgrades. It's exactly. a constant billion, <laughs> billion dollar <laughs> enterprise. We've been scammed for 20 years yes, by big have. tech, and it's just dawning on us. It's unbelievable. Yeah, exactly. Gary Turchi, yeah, exactly. you, were, you were the cutting edge of that. For sure, you figured that out first. Great to see you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Tucker. We'll be right back. Really kind of an unbelievable night in the news business. A report last night from BuzzFeed News, and let's add air quotes around the word news, accused the President of the United States of ordering his personal lawyer, former lawyer, Michael Cohen, to lie under oath to Congress. He encouraged perjury. 
That would be a felony. It would be an impeachable offense. All day long, you have heard people on television speculating about this, prefaced with, if true. But now, after we have spent literally 24 hours imagining the president being dragged in chains to a holding cell, Robert Mueller's office, in a move that has no precedent at all, out of nowhere, issued, in effect, a denial of the BuzzFeed story. BuzzFeed, meanwhile, has issued a statement just about 20 minutes ago, daring the special counsel, in effect, to fact check their own story. Insanity. Chris Hahn is radio host. He's former aide to Chuck Schumer. He joins us tonight. So, Chris, I wonder, I mean, my primary interest as someone who spent his life in the media is in the behavior of the media, and my jaw is open almost full time watching it. But I wonder if any of the parade of dumb people we've watched for the last 24 hours will step forward and say, you know what, I, we probably shouldn't throw allegations around prefaced with the phrase, if true. Because if we don't know it's true, we probably yeah, I, shouldn't I, be alleging it. Is that fair? I, I, that is fair, frankly. And I think that media outlets, when they get a story like this, sensational story like this, they should try to confirm it before they run with it uh, on their own, using their own reporters and their own editorial standards. I don't know what the editorial standards are at BuzzFeed. And frankly, uh, the special counsel who doesn't ever talk to choose this moment to talk suggests that that story is completely un untrue. I've heard some people parsing words, saying that it's inaccurate, whatnot. But we haven't heard from Mueller. But this should also, con you know, this should also ease concerns about anybody in America who thinks that Robert Mueller is not going to be fair to the president. This shows he's a man of honor, and if he sees something that is way out of line, he's going to call it out. So uh, I, uh, you know, kudos to Robert Mueller for stepping in uh, because this really was a sensational story, and all the if trues were. Uh, you know, if it was true, this would have been one of the most horrible things we've heard so far and would have absolutely led to impeachment hearings at the very least. So uh, Robert Mueller did the right thing. He stepped in. And I think the news media needs to take some ownership uh, uh, of the mistake that was made here, particularly BuzzFeed. And, and I think all the media outlets that ran with this really should in the future do their best to confirm these stories on their own. Uh, you know, before they go and, and, and spend 24 hours talking about it. And you would think, you know, I was thinking around 3 o'clock this afternoon when no one else had confirmed this story that, you know, where are we at with this? This is BuzzFeed. I don't really know their standards. I know Ben Smith. I think he's been a, a decent reporter most of his career. But I don't know uh, what kind of editorial background checks they're doing on these sources. And, right. and like my well, friend just, Dan just, Bongino just to, said Just to earlier, confirm for the record, but, I mean, Ben Smith is a joke, and I think anyone who knows Ben Smith will confirm that. He's a smart person, but obviously a dishonest, reckless person. He ran, I mean, and, and again, anyone who knows him, I think will confirm that. But this is the same outlet that deviated from the, the cat slide shows long enough to run the right. Steele dossier, which the same news outlets absorbed as if it were real, too. And Donald Trump was paying hookers to urinate on him. Do you remember all this? I mean, this is like not new ground. We've we've plowed this ground already. Like lunatic cat slideshow website runs unconfirmed <laughs> salacious report that turns out to be false. And CNN pretends well, that it's real. You know, I think they have an obligation right now. You know, if their sources really did burn them and if, as Dan Bongino said, this was some sort of canary trap, they should reveal right. their sources. They should call those sources out and they should say, hey, look. You know, these guys lied to us, according to what the, the special counsel has said tonight, and they should make a deal about this. But I think this is the, you know, well, that's, the big a, that's story a fair, here but that's a me, totally this, fair point. Yeah. The silver, the silver lining in this story, though, tonight is that this should reaffirm people on the right that Mueller is going to be fair. <laughs> and I hope that that is actually the message that they're taking away from well, tonight. Well, okay, because can, I think can, Americans, can I when say, he releases I, I his report, you, when he <laughs> finally releases <laughs> when he Just finally so releases funny. his report, we should all understand it. Okay. But I don't think you have to be a man of extraordinary integrity to find BuzzFeed ludicrous. I mean, I, I think small children find Buzz I mean, BuzzFeed is prima facie ludicrous. It's an absurd website. Well, and so, like, it doesn't, it doesn't mean that you're a man of ex amazing honor. <laughs> you call out BuzzFeed well, the, for being look, as ridiculous the, the, the as it so obviously is. The president's attorney general nominee said that, that Mueller was a man of honor and a friend of his. And, but I don't think most Americans heard that. But tonight <laughs> they heard him loud and clear when he pulled back this statement. So that's twice in, in, in one week that, Can I ask that, you one question that the right really should quick? be reassured in him. Really yeah. quick. So Amy Klobuchar of Minnesota at the bar hearings the other day 
said something almost that almost seemed like she had read the BuzzFeed story before it ran. She said, would obstruction of justice, suborning perjury be an impeachable offense? She asked Barr that almost like she was setting up a predicate for the story. Do you think yeah. that she had read the BuzzFeed story before it came out? I'm guessing.